One of the Middle East's bloodiest conflicts is also one of its most overlooked. It's not Syria or Iraq. It's in a different place entirely, Yemen. The 20-month-old civil war there has killed more than 10,000 people and triggered a massive humanitarian crisis. But press coverage has been minimal, overshadowed by the fight against ISIS in Syria and in Iraq. In Yemen, one side has Houthi rebels backed by Iran. On the other, you have the former Yemeni government of Abderbu Mansour al-Hadi, backed by a coalition of 10 countries led by neighboring Saudi Arabia, who is ultimately also backed by the U.S. The civil war there erupted in 2015 when the Houthis, a Shiite group who received money and weapons from Iran, took up arms to overthrow Yemen's government, which is Sunni, and backed by Saudi Arabia. The Houthis complain that the government discriminated against them for years, mistreating them on a large scale, and that their fight is a fight to be treated fairly. Many in the region, by contrast, see it very differently. They think it's the latest front in a shadow war between Saudi Arabia and Iran for control over the entire region. In March of 2015, Saudi Arabia began bombing Houthi-held territory across Yemen, causing mass civilian casualties. They've destroyed targets ranging from marketplaces to hospitals, from schools, and even to a funeral recently, where 140 people were killed in a single strike. In August, the Saudis bombed the vital port of Hodeidah, severely damaging a main source of Yemen's food and humanitarian aid shipments, and increasing the chances of mass starvation in what is already an impoverished country. The indiscriminate bombing has prompted investigations by the UN for possible war crimes. But while the Saudis are leading this bloody campaign, the blame also spreads to a great power whose support is directly contributing to the carnage, to the United States. The US has supported Saudi Arabia militarily since World War II, selling arms, providing military aid, and training the Saudi military on how to use US-manufactured planes, tanks, and other weapons. In recent years, Saudi Arabia has bought more weapons from the US than any other country in the world. Just since March of 2015, the US has authorized $22 billion worth of weapon sales to Saudi Arabia. The most recent deal includes 20 Abrams tanks listed as battle damage replacements. The battle, of course, is Yemen. The weapons the US sells also include cluster bombs, banned by most of the international community, and F-15 fighter planes, which is making up the vast bulk of what the Saudi Air Force is currently using as it bombs Yemen. But America's aid to Saudi Arabia goes way beyond weapon sales, and it's directly contributing to the current fight. That's because Washington is literally helping to refuel Saudi planes while they strike targets across Yemen. When the Saudis asked the U.S. to refuel one of their planes, giant American tankers like the KC-135 Stratotanker take off from the Incirlik Air Base in Turkey or from U.S. carriers in the Arabian Sea. They then link up with Saudi F-15s in international airspace. These airborne refuels give the Saudi planes a much longer range and allow Saudi's air campaign to become more lethal because the planes can stay in the air longer and hit targets much more frequently. As of late November, the U.S. had flown more than 1,600 refueling missions to over 6,300 aircraft in the skies bombing Yemen. That's an average of two a day. So why is the U.S. so supportive of this bloody campaign? The most important reason is the Iran nuclear deal. In 2015, the Obama administration offered to drop its crippling economic sanctions on Iran in exchange for Iran limiting its nuclear program. Without those sanctions, Iran's political and economic power has significantly increased making Saudi Arabia nervous that their enemy will gain new influence in the region, in countries from Iraq to Lebanon, and from Syria to Yemen. Now that Iranian influence is in Saudi Arabia's backyard, the Saudis fear that Houthi rebels loyal to Iran will now be literally on the footsteps of their country. They want U.S. help beating them back. Secondly, the intervention in Yemen is also a part of the U.S.'s broader counter-terror strategy for the Middle East. The goal of U.S. policy in Yemen is to make sure that Yemen cannot be a safe haven that extremists can use to attack the West and to attack the United States. Yemen is home to the most active and dangerous branch of al-Qaeda. The U.S. has a major interest in preventing this terror group from taking advantage of the power vacuum in Yemen to plot new attacks. Finally, the U.S. is honoring one of its longest standing and most important allies. Since World War II, Saudi Arabia has been a vital partner against communism and now terrorism. 
the Yemen campaign is a high priority for Saudi Arabia, and that makes it a priority for the United States. But as the war devolves into a bloody stalemate, the administration is increasingly worried about being complicit in potential war crimes. In State Department documents obtained by Reuters, a media agenda from January of 2016 talks about limiting exposure to LOAC, which means the Law of Armed Conflict. Some in the White House worry that the U.S. was potentially violating that law because of its assistance to Saudi Arabia. In those documents, State Department officials also discuss the implications of a 2013 international court decision implying that if the U.S. were to provide practical assistance, encouragement, or moral support to the Saudis, the U.S. could be charged with war crimes itself. In an effort to avoid this, the U.S. issued a no-strike list to the Saudis to try to mitigate civilian casualties. It included things like known hospitals, universities, schools, cemeteries. The Saudis appear to be ignoring it. The U.N. estimates 10,000 people have died in the fighting, that 370,000 children are malnourished, and that 10,000 other children have already died from preventable disease. Nearly 3 million people have been pushed out of their homes in the last year of fighting alone. Truces have come and gone, while hopes for peace talks falter. The Houthis continue to run the government in the capital of Sana'a, raising questions about what Saudi Arabia has actually accomplished, and whether any of it could possibly be worth the cost. Here at home, in Congress, some lawmakers from both parties have talked about stopping weapons sales to Saudi Arabia until it does more to keep the air war in Yemen from causing massive human rights abuses. Others argue that America's relationship with Saudi Arabia is so important that the U.S. needs to keep selling weapons despite the carnage in Yemen. The Obama administration, for its part, has repeatedly urged the Saudis to do more to avoid accidentally hitting targets like schools and like hospitals. The White House has also condemned individual attacks. But the reality is that the U.S. finds itself increasingly complicit with the actions of a coalition led by Saudi Arabia. That means President Obama will leave office with America helping an ally fight a bloody war, causing mass civilian suffering that shows no signs of ending. And that is not a legacy to be proud of. <laughs>